Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. Today I'd like to share about how backpacking has changed for me over the years. And by this, I'm really not talking about upgrading my gear or even necessarily growing in experience, though that is a small part of it. What I mostly mean is the role backpacking has played in my life over the years since I started doing it. And I also want to take some time to kind of explain what's been going on lately. Uh, the channel and the blog have both been pretty quiet, no real new updates, no new uploads, and that's mostly due to some technology issues that up until almost two weeks ago I had no solution for. But also there's been a lot of responsibilities in my personal life that need to take priority right now. And so backpacking kind of takes a back burner. But so let's go ahead and get into this. If you've been following my blog and my channel for a minute now, chances are you already know the story of my first backpacking trip. So I started out as just a day hiker and a friend suggested we try taking a weekend trip in Pisgah National Forest, specifically up to Black Balsam Knob. And I just, I couldn't believe that places like this actually existed, where you could hike up a mountain and camp there if you wanted, with no fee to pay, no permits to apply for. You just follow the regulations of the area and make sure you're prepared and you can do it. Well, I really didn't heed that second requirement. I had a 45 pound pack full of stuff that I didn't need and was completely unprepared. We ended up having to bail out that night because of it. And quick side note, after that trip, I posted the video I took of it as well as a day hike at Grandfather Mountain up on YouTube, but I really didn't expect anything to come of it. Now, for some people, having just a mediocre experience is enough to turn them off to backpacking altogether. But even after having a really rough time, I still wanted so badly to get back out there and try again. And that's kind of how I knew I was gonna love backpacking. Shortly after, I took a few overnight and weekend trips just to get my feet under me and figure out the basics. So those first few trips were all about getting to explore the places I love to day hike in a whole new way. I was getting to go further and see things that I couldn't otherwise see if I was just out for the afternoon. Like when you've only got a couple hours on the trail, a lot goes unexplored. But when you've got everything you need on your back, you just have so much more freedom. That place way off in the distance doesn't have to stay a mystery. You can go satisfy that curiosity, sort of, like until you see the next place way off in the distance you want to explore.
around this time I was working a really stressful job. I think we've all had those jobs where there's no boundaries and you almost have no permission to live a life outside of work. Because even in your off time, you're being bombarded with things you need to be worried about for Monday morning. And so backpacking became kind of an escape, a way that I could get away from all of the stress and chaos in my life at the time. So I used every weekend, every vacation day I could to get into the backcountry and away from all of that. And thankfully, God really used the solitude that I got from those trips to kind of restore me and help me to face the next work week until I could get out of that situation. Sometime later, I had left that job and was actually in the process of transitioning out of that career field altogether. And with this new freedom, I was planning to do a spring through hike of the Foothills Trail. And then I got really sick. There's a lot of story and details behind it, but in a nutshell, the muscles in both my legs and one of my arms were shutting down on me. So chronic pain, inflammation, muscle atrophy, all of that. And having no previous health conditions or illnesses, this was incredibly confusing. And no number of doctors or specialists I went to could tell me how or why this was happening. They said that it looked like autoimmune disease and the only hope for living a normal life again was to take a series of very expensive medications that would cause other systems in my body to have problems that would then require more expensive medications. So it left me with a pretty hard decision to make. Do I take these prescriptions that I know will put a band-aid on the symptoms now, but make things worse later? Or do I continue to live this way where I can't even walk up the stairs, let alone carry a pack through the woods? Backpacking pretty much became unattainable, unreachable. It was something that I had no idea when I would be able to get back out and do again. the story does have a happy ending. I decided to decline all the medications and treatments and opt for a different route. So my husband and I prayed and fasted together every night for months. And through this, I wound up growing just so much deeper in my relationship with God and ended up working out some things in my faith that I had no idea needed to be worked out. But through all of that, I ended up experiencing a pretty incredible miracle. And funny enough, backpacking played a role in it. So I was finally feeling well enough to try hiking again. And I decided to take a short weekend trip. 
but this was a major test of my faith because I had to fight all of this just fear and doubt in the back of my mind saying, well, what if something goes wrong? But I went ahead anyway and actually took the toughest route I knew to get into camp and I was fine. I mean, aside from the usual soreness in your feet you get from hiking, there were no problems. And I was just so grateful to be out in nature again. Most of that trip was spent hanging around my campsite, reading my Bible, just thanking God that I could be out doing what I loved again. And you can believe me or not, but after I left my campsite that weekend, I never had a single problem with that condition, illness, whatever you want to call it, again. trail in fall that year instead of spring and God really works things out for good because had I gone in spring I wouldn't have met any of the people that I met that fall and my experience would have looked completely different all the times in which I needed to rely on him on the trail just things would have happened completely different and so this trip kind of set in motion the idea of starting a YouTube channel, or at least taking seriously uh, uploading videos and all of that. And the whole Foothills Trail trip really showed me that I have a passion for editing and storytelling. And I know that video is probably going to be like the pinnacle of my career. Nothing will ever top it or be quite as good, I guess, and that's fine. But so backpacking now took on this creative side. It was a way to feed that creative side and grow my editing skills and share stories with others. And it just kind of set in motion all of the videos that followed, like the art lobe, is that all you got loop, um, Black Mountain Crest, revisiting Gorgeous State Park, you get the picture. I've been walking in a country oh. And I've been chasing after my shadow Nobody asked me my name Baby, will never see me again. And I hold on to life in the palm of my hand. <laughs> I think God must really love this land. And I been sipping on that sweet cherry And I've been laughing and smoking in the shade Pink clouds rolling through like ships in the sky I fell a sadness in my heart By the time I had posted 
all the content, the trip report, video, itinerary, all of that for standing Indian loop, I was really wiped out and starting to realize that I don't want to hike anymore just for the sake of powering through a suffer fest or logging big miles. I really just wanted to hike for the enjoyment of it and somehow recapture that feeling that I had when I first started. And I hoped that taking a break might do the trick. I'm tired, so I'm going to take a break and I'll see you again in the spring. So I came back from my break feeling not all that different, but I was prepared this spring to take on new trips. So I was going to try the Grand Loop in Linville and maybe even finally get around to the Bartram, whether that's through hiking or section hiking. But I was planning to do a bunch of different trips this spring. And then life got really busy. In fact, it's still really busy and is gonna be busy for the foreseeable future. So getting out on trips had to take a back burner. And spring's almost over and I've only gotten out on a handful of trips, most of which were spur of the moment overnights, because lately that's all I can manage. So maybe you're thinking like, what a bummer, but there's actually been a couple silver linings to it. So for one, having limited time to backpack has really made me appreciate the time I do get out on the trail. And actually it rekindled that feeling that I was looking for. When I was able to finally get out on a longer trip, it was just so magical. Like even the sucky parts of scarce water and getting sunburned, all of that was tinted with rose colored glasses. And the second kind of silver lining to having limited time on the trail is it's given me a ton of time to work on the magazine and write and plan for not just the summer issue that's coming up, but also future issues, which quick reminder, the summer issue of Bear Necessity launches June 1st, and you can read it by subscribing on my website, seagrass2sassfrass.com slash subscription, not subscribe, subscription. So like I said, life has been really busy and shows no signs of slowing down, but that has given me so much time to really look at backpacking as a side hustle or future career opportunity by branching outside of YouTube and working on writing itineraries and writing for the magazine, even planning some blog content. And I'll be honest, I'm really not interested in going super far from home or hiking longer trails. We've talked about this in the Q&A already. Places like the AT, the PCT, none of that appeals to me. I love home and the life I'm building with my husband so much. I just couldn't bear to leave it for any long period of time. I have a direction that I know I want to take my blog, my channel, just everything that I'm doing. And that's the way I'm going to take it. And you know, some of that involves revisiting and further exploring the places I've already been and I really love. So that's kind of how backpacking has changed for me and the many roles it has played in my life. I'm really excited to see just how it continues to change and the role it'll play throughout my lifetime going forward. I hope you enjoyed some of what was shared here today and please don't hesitate to share how backpacking has changed and the role it's played in your own life. I really love hearing from y'all and your experiences, your stories. So again, please don't hesitate to share. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time.